and by your mighty hand. You are here and you have come to deliver your people. And even as you delivered Israel, and even as Jesus delivered, so you have come to deliver your people. And I pray that the mighty hand of God would rest upon us today. In Jesus' holy, precious name. Amen. Amen. So, um, now, uh, a teacher uh, is one who teaches uh, what people uh, do not yet know. So when you receive teaching, uh, your te a teacher teaches people uh, something that they don't yet know. But an admonisher, and the Bible tells us to admonish, an admonisher is someone who admonishes people about the things that they already do know. Uh, so uh, sometimes we teach you, uh, sometimes we preach to you, or admonish, as it were, the revelation of the things that you already know. And today is about an admonishment. Uh, so you should already know, if you've been Christmas Christian five minutes, you should already know the stuff I'm about to tell you. But now, I don't want you just to know it, I want to admonish it to you, so that you begin to understand that God wants you to do it. Can you all say do it? Do it. Can you say do it with conviction? Do it with conviction. <laughs> See, do something while you can, because a time is coming when you not be able to do the something you want to do. So don't do, if you don't do the something now, you may well find that it'll be too late because a time is coming when you will be able to do nothing. Now whether that's because you've gone into the box, not one of those boxes on, uh, on Zoom, but one of the, the, the box, uh, or whether it's because the Lord returns, the reality is there's a time coming when Christians won't be able to work in the way that God longs for us to work. So do something while you can, because a time is coming when you will be able to do nothing. So how do you bring the light into the enemy's camp and gain yourself a victory? Let me just declare again, I said this last week, I'll say it again. God is not going to do anything else to bring about your salvation. God is not going to do anything else to bring about your salvation. He wants you to do something about what he has already done. So God is not going to do anything more to bring about your salvation because he's already done it. But he wants you to step into the reality of what he has already done. Can you see the admonishing bit? So I admonish you. I admonish you in Jesus' name that God wants us to do something about what he has already done. So often we're wanting God to do something more. But God doesn't need to do anything more because it's finished. And so he admonishes us to take hold of what he has already said. Because the strong man is bound. I love that song that I wrote. He is bound. The strong man is bound. Jesus has bound the strong man. Which means that we are liberated from the power of the enemy. In Mark 3.27 it says this, But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property unless he first binds the strong man. And then he will plunder his house. Jesus has bound the strong man. Amen? Amen. 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 In Jude 23 it says, Save! Save! And uh, we are the Lord's saving people. The church represents the reality of the body of Christ on earth. The head, Jesus, is in heaven, seated at the right hand side of the Father. But we, the body, are on earth. And God has called his body to be the saving people. To be those who reveal the reality of God to the world. So Jude 23 says this, Save others, snatching them out of the fire. Have mercy with fear, hating even the garments polluted by their flesh. God has called the church to be the saving people. That's why God admonishes you this morning 
and says to you, I'm not teaching you anything new. I'm giving you an admonishment that you would do what you are called to do and you can do it because Jesus has done something to enable us to do it. Before Jesus did what he did, we couldn't do anything. We were locked out. But Jesus has done it. And the strong man is bound. And we can do something now. And God is wanting his church to rise up and do the something that God wants the church to do. For too long it has not done. But God admonishes us today to do the something that he wants us to do. So go into their camp. That's those who don't know how to go into the camp of the enemy. Go into their camp and release them. Release them from the bondage. Go into your camp, your enemy's camp, and release yourself from the bondage. And go into the camp, the camp of the enemy, and bring down the strongholds that are binding people and making it impossible for them to see the reality of God's love. Bring chaos, chaos, he says. So Jesus is saying, I admonish you to bring chaos into the camp of your enemy. I could have got amen. amen. I could have got a hallelujah. I didn't get anything. So how do you take your light into the enemy's camp? You say words. And you pray words. And you sing words. And Judges, in this story of Gideon, gives us a pictorial insight into how Gideon brought about uh, God into the enemy's camp. I had a phone call in the week from a young lady. And she began to tell me something about something. And then she was telling me the something that she was telling me about the something. Because I can't tell you what she told me. Because it was private. But she began to talk to me about something and I knew in my heart because I could hear in her voice, here is a troubled soul. Here is a troubled soul. And I saw in my ear, in my heart, she was on the phone, this one has a troubled soul. And so I began to ask her, let's lay aside the something you wanted to talk about and let's talk about your troubled soul. Now I was able to do that because God revealed it to me. And I responded to it. And here was a captive who was being driven by an enemy, manipulating her life. And God chose me to gain insight in order to help her. And brothers and sisters, there are millions and millions and millions of opportunities for the church to bring chaos into the enemy's camp. If we, the church, will take heed of the admonishment and enable us to go into that camp and bring chaos. So how do we, do, how do we bring light into the enemy's camp? Well, Psalm 19, 105 says this, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And God's word is the means by which he brings the reality of chaos into the enemy's camp. That's why Jesus talked about the truth that sets captives free. Because the word of God, in the negative situation of people's lives, including your own, will release you if you believe what the Lord says to you. If you receive what he says. Now Midian was Israel's enemy. In life we will have to face many enemies. That's not the problem. The problem is how will we defeat the many enemies that we face? And God has equipped and given to the church the means and the resources to defeat every enemy that sets its face against the real purpose plans of God for your life. Because the strong man is bound. Because Jesus bound the strong man. Go and bring about, says the Lord, your own deliverance.
Go and bring about your own deliverance. Because God has given to you already the means for salvation. Go and bring about their deliverance. Because God has already given the means for them to be delivered. Now, do you believe that? Wave your hand and say hallelujah. 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 Do you believe that God has given us the resources to deliver ourselves? Do you believe that God has given you the resources to deliver other people? So are you ready to become the army of God that impacts the world that you live in and influences the lives of people around you? Midian was Israel's enemy. So, his word in us will deliver us, but only if we believe it. If you don't believe it, it won't deliver you. Because the only requirement that God has got for you, in terms of your contribution, is you trust him. If you believe him, he will give you what you need. But you have to believe him. If you could get into your enemy's camp and listen to what your enemy's saying about you, you would no longer be afraid of your enemy anymore. Oh, the back just got in. It's all gone. You will no longer be afraid of your enemy anymore. If you could just know what's going on in the enemy's camp because of you, you would not be afraid of your enemy. Jesus tells us that, sorry, James tells us that at the name of Jesus, our enemies, that's demons, they what? The bow, they flee, they shudder. They shudder. At the name of Jesus, our enemies shudder. And so we don't need to be afraid of what our enemy says. Because the enemy, the, the enemy of God has been defeated. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Amen. Do you believe that the enemy of God has been defeated? Yes. You're not convincing me that you do. God does not want Gideon to be afraid. So he gives him the opportunity to go into the enemy's camp and listen to what the enemy thinks about him. And he hears the enemy telling of a dream that he had in order to be able to gain insight into the reality of what it means to be afraid of God. And this story in this dream reveals that God is going to destroy the Midianites. God is going to destroy the enemy of God. God is going to destroy every enemy. Do you believe that? Amen. You're getting into this. <laughs> look, look at the fear that's in the heart of the enemy. Look at the fear that's in the heart of the enemy. He knows he's going to be de defeated. It's just a matter of time. He knows that God is going to deliver. And I ask you this morning, do you know that God is going to deliver? Yeah. Yeah. That God has delivered. Yeah. That you don't need to be afraid of your enemy anymore. Yeah. Do you know God will deliver you? <coughs> Brothers and sisters, what God says he will do, he will do. He will keep his promises. He will not let you down. Do you believe that? You will have your victory over your enemy even if you still have to go through a battle. And there is a battle to go through because the Lord requires you to do something about the salvation that he has already given. He requires you to do something. And unless you do the something that you need to do for yourself, 
and for those outside, you will not receive the salvation that is given. We need to do something in order to be able to enter into the salvation that God has already given. So Gideon has a strategy. Divide the light. He had a plan. Bring his light into the darkness of his enemy's camp. And I said that when we bring the word of God, the truth of God, into the confusion and into the problem and into the pain of people's lives, we cause chaos inside of that scenario. How should we do this? Bring the sound of the Lord's victory into the camp of the enemy. Bring God's word, which is the light, into the camp of the enemy. So Gideon, inst Gideon instructs 300 men to put their light inside a pitcher. Just like they did with the Trojan horse. You remember the Trojan horse story? When the Greeks began to attack Troy. And they, then they deceived the Trojans by pretending to leave, set sail. And they left a Trojan horse and the Trojans brought it into the city. They had been under siege for 10 years. They had no success. But once they got inside the enemy's camp with this Trojan horse, thinking they had gained a great victory over the Greeks, in the night time, those inside the Trojan horse opened the gates and let the Greeks in and destroyed the city. And a 10-year war was over. And when we get inside the enemy's camp with the light of God and the truth of God, it doesn't matter how long we've been under siege, the enemy will be destroyed. And that's what Jesus did when he went into the cross and he went into death. He already won the victory. Now he wants us to do something about the victory that he has already won. So Gideon had a strategy. Gideon says to his men, do what I do. John 5.19 says, Jesus speaking, I only do the things that my father does. And just like when I was on the phone the other day and the prompting of the Spirit said to me, ask the question. You've got a troubled soul. And the girl began to share her heart. So we need to listen to what God has said, both for ourselves in regards to the problems that we have. Which means we need to learn to listen to the voice of God. The Spirit of God that lives in our spirit, speaking to us, trying to help us, strengthen us, resource us, to take back control over our soul and our body so that we can be victorious in the flesh, in the body, as well as in the soul, as well as in the spirit. And when we get the Word of God in us, like the Trojan horse, we will bring down the enemy. Or like when Peter was told to come walking on the water. And when he took his eyes off of Jesus and he started listening to himself, he began to sink. And as he sank, he cried out, save me, where the Lord reached out and saved him. And the Lord will reach out and save you, even if you sink. But he would rather you walk on the water. He would rather you came to the victory that he's already won. There was no reason for Peter to sink, except that he took his eyes off the Lord. And when we take our eyes off the Lord and look at our enemy, we will sink too. But God has given us victory when we keep our eyes on God and not on our enemy. When we look at our enemy, we too will sink. But if we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and do what he does and say what he says, we will have our victory. And Gideon's strategy continues. He says to the 300 men at the boundary point of the enemy's camp, at the boundary point of the enemy's camp, when we take our first step into the enemy's camp, right at the outskirts of the camp, it is important to know what we will be doing when we are there in the enemy's camp. Or we may find ourselves, while we're in the enemy's camp, being captured by the enemy. See, sometimes we have tried to go into the enemy's camp, but we haven't, we're not sure why we're there. But we need to know why we're there. That's the only way we're going to know how to gain a victory. 
And we need to know that if we want to gain a victory, we need to bring the light of God into the enemy's camp so that we can be like the Trojan horse. Do as I do, says Gideon to his 300 men. And God is saying to his people today, that's the church, do as I do. And this is the gospel that Jesus preached in John chapter four, in, in Luke chapter 4, when he, when he cried out, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news. You know the scripture. And God has called the church to be those who go and proclaim good news to a world in darkness. But that same good news is for you too. You too. If you believe and take on board what God has said. For Psalm 38 says, God wants us to press in on our enemy. And we need to constantly ask ourselves, when we are pressing in on our enemy and trying to resolve problems, does the resolve of our problem look like Jesus? What I'm about to do, what I'm about to say, what I'm about to think, what I'm about to feel, what I'm about, where I'm about to go, does this look like Jesus? Because every strategy of victory that God gives to us will look like Jesus. It will bear the hallmark of Jesus on it. And brothers and sisters, if it doesn't look like Jesus, it isn't Jesus. Because Jesus is clear as clear can be. And there are so many things that we can see about the life of Jesus that people are proclaiming as Jesus, but it's not the Jesus that I read about in the Bible. There's another kind of Jesus. But it's not the Son of God, the King of Heaven, the Saviour of the world. Does it look like Jesus? At the point you make your entry, listen, when your enemy begins to knock at your front door, don't let him in. If you let him in and you invite him in and sit and talk with him so that you have fellowship with him and you let him invest in you, don't be surprised that your enemy has power over you. You have listened to your enemy. And John says, don't let your enemy into your home. Gideon says at this point of entry, blow the trumpet. And that means to make the sound of victory. It means to sing in your enemy's camp. And, this, and worship and singing can be the very power and strength while we're in our enemy's camp. And learning to overcome the pressures and the problems of life with the song of the Lord is your victory. It looks like Jesus. Even when Jesus was suffering, he worshipped his God. He declared the victory. So not only sing, but declare, say, say with words the victory that is ours in God. Because declaration and confession with our mouths will enable us to position ourselves why would Gideon use and say these things? Because a declaration and a confession is a positioning of ourselves where we have made our stand. So when we make a declaration, we make a stand while we are in our enemy's camp. You can see what's happening, can't you? Romans 10 says this, verse 8, the word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. And when we declare the word of the Lord in the enemy's camp, we position ourselves, we align ourselves with the word that we declare. So if we have need and we say, God, you are my healer when I'm sick, and God, you are my saviour when I am lost, and God, you are my deliver, deliverer when I'm in prison, and God, you are my help when I need help. And God, you are my provider when I need provision. These are the declarations that we stand in when we're in the enemy's camp. And God wants us to declare the word of the Lord. For Romans 10, 8 says this, The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. And we need to be those who declare the revelation of the word of God. For with the heart a person believes 
resulting in righteousness. And with the mouth, his confession, resulting in salvation. Verse 10. Paul says, How then will they call on him in whom they have believed? How will they believe in him in whom they have not heard? How will they hear without a preacher? And how will they preach unless they are sent? God has got the church on the earth to do something. But the church has not done the something that it should have done. And as a result, the world is going to hell. And those who haven't heard are going to hell. Because the church won't get up and do the something that God wants them to do. The revelation of Luke chapter 4. Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? Or to put it like this, whose report will you believe? Are you going to believe the report of the enemy? Or are you going to believe the word of the Lord? We need to know where we are standing when our enemy turns and fights against us. Let your enemy know by whose authority you have fought against him. They ask Jesus, by whose authority you are able to forgive sins? And he demonstrated in Mark 2, 1 to 12, the story of the paralyzed man. What authority do you have to dress your enemy? Mark and Matthew 28 says this, Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go ye and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them all that I have commanded you. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The authority that we have when we're in the enemy's camp is the authority that God has given to us because of the victory that he gained at the cross. Now, two-thirds through this, so I'm going to close here. And I'm going to just carry on on the YouTube like I did last week. Father, we know that your kingdom came and your will was done. And the kingdom that came and the will that's been done for the last 2,000 years is still needing to be done. But your people, we, your people, even as Daniel said, we, your people, we have gone astray. We have lost our way. We have not gone as we should and said what we should. But we're sorry to you. We're sorry this morning. Father, we're sorry. And we ask you to forgive us that we haven't gone. And even when we have gone, we've often gone with wrong motives and wrong intent. But we pray that you would change all of that. And you would bring about the kind of changes in us, your church, as well as the church across the lands of the earth. So that the nations can see and hear the revelation of the gospel again. Father, we pray that you would strengthen us as we allow you to admonish us to become proactive in going to the enemy's camp and causing chaos. Lord, release your church from all the fear and intimidation that stops us from going. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, God bless you all. Uh, if you want to catch up on your